let's talk about investing for a second. Yeah. Was it something that you were immediately good at? Is there yeah. a learning curve there? And I'm asking you this for a reason. Everybody thinks we live in a society where everybody, number one, is a boss and everybody feels that success is supposed to happen right away. Now, granted, you said, look, I became a millionaire by 30. Yep. So we know that's in the cards for you. But when you first started out, talk to me about the learning curve. Talk to me about keeping your head low and just learning before you were able to really go and make the kind of money that you eventually made? Yep. So I, um, that's a great question. I, um, I had to learn trial just by going through the fire, trial by fire. Um, I was a horrible investor when I first started. And even, even having studied all of the, the exams and licenses that I needed to, to become a, a, a licensed stockbroker, my Series 7, uh, my Series 66, my Pennsylvania Life and Health, um, all the exams still didn't prepare me to, to, to be a good investor. Um, largely because like everyone else, my very first mutual fund, actually it was before I became a broker, my very first mutual fund was in 1999. It was a technology mutual fund. And I bought it because there was so much hype surrounding it. You know, like I don't even, if you remember the late 90s, it was like the dot com era. Yep, you know, yeah, we were we, yeah, we were just getting like, you know, Netscape and AOL. I mean, like technology stocks were 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 going crazy. And I remember thinking, like, I want in on some of that money. Like, yeah, you know, I want I want like that that's fast money. That thing went up a couple hundred percent. Like it was it was going nuts. It was going crazy. Kind of like Tesla was just recently when everybody jumped on a bandwagon, but that's 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 a separate story. Um, so I bought my very first mutual fund and within Probably like within six months of buying the thing, I lost seventy percent of my entire investment. Seventy wow. percent, and and I'm glad it happened. You know, I'm I'm, I'm glad it, I'm glad it happened. And the subsequent chases that I that I went through after that, I also I lost my investment on in those. I remember I was investing big in one of the satellite radio companies. I think it was Sirius Satellite Radio at the time, and that was the new hype. And I I, I went I went running into the hype, and it took me years of getting burned over and over and over again to actually finally listen, finally listen to a, a gentleman named uh, Warren Buffett, who's arguably one of the greatest, greatest investors alive. Um, and he said something like, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful, right? So basically what I had to learn was when everyone's running in a building, there's a problem. There's, it's, it's problematic. When, when your Uber driver starts asking you about Tesla, like it's, it's probably, a, you know, it's a hype at this point, you know, when, right. when everybody, when everybody wants in on something, um, you know, it, it, it may be a bubble at that point. And I had to learn to basically do what feels counterintuitive to survival. You know, and any, anybody would say to you, Sean, when it comes down to investing, how do you make money in an investment, any investment, stocks, real estate, how do you make money? You buy it at a lower price, right? And if it's real estate, you do some value add, you collect some rents, whatever, you sell it at a higher price, right? That's how you make money in real estate. In right. stocks, I buy a stock at a lower price, right? It may kick off a dividend and I sell it at a higher price, right? You buy low, you sell high. In its most simple form, form I buy low, I sell high, right? That's how you make money. So when our emotions are not involved, right? When there's no, you know, we take the behavioral finance out of it. I buy low, sell high, that's how I make money. However, when it comes down to our actual money, when we apply our emotions to how we invest when it's our dollars and cents on the line we do the exact opposite of how you make money in the stock market right a stock goes up 200 percent, 300 percent. that look like a good investment let me get in on that you know i want i want that thing now right i buy it when it's high and then when it plummets like oh maybe that wasn't a, a good idea it plummets and that's when i sell it we literally just saw that with tesla tesla went up like 500 percent in a matter of a year like which is just insane um, and people are like, at the peak of it, yeah, that looks like a good investment. I want it after it went up 500%. Bro, seriously? Yeah. Were you thinking about it back when the stock market, you know, during their collapse back in, in, in March of 2020? Were you looking at it in April when it was still really low? Or once it skyrocketed, that's when you wanted to buy it. And when it plummeted subsequently after the split, I mean, it dropped, it dropped 20% just yesterday. Single largest drop ever, which means that there were a lot of people selling it. So what I believe is you had a lot of traders who bought the thing a, m a week ago or two weeks ago, um, just on the news of the split, and then watched this thing drop 20% in one day. It dropped uh, last trading day as well. And then people started panicking and selling it. 
So, um, so that's my, my philosophy is much more today, much more of a disciplined way of investing. I do what feels counterintuitive to survival. When something is, um, when something gets beat up, that's when I run in. After everyone's panicking and selling, when there are a lot of sellers, when there's what they call in Wall Street blood in the streets, mm-hmm. that's when I that's when I swoop in, right? And I and I tend I tend to hold a really really long time. I buy really good companies. I don't speculate. I don't pick um, penny stocks thinking this thing's going to go up a thousand percent. I said I said to someone on um, one of the socials the other day that trying to pick one of those penny stocks that will ultimately become or transform or turn into an Amazon or an Apple or, or a Netflix. That's almost like going to a peewee league and trying to pick out specifically which seven-year-old is going to make it to the NFL. Correct. The, like, the likelihood that any of them are going to make it is slim to none, right? So statistically, none of, none of them are going to make it. But then to be able to look at a kid and say, yeah, I think that kid right there is going to make it to the NFL, chances are it will not happen. You will not be able to make that call. So I buy, I buy good companies, valuable companies. I like companies that pay dividends. I like companies that are, that are cheap, not according to share price, because most of us just look at share price and think, well, if the share price is low, that means the stock is cheap. Share price is irrelevant, which most people don't even, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't even quite comprehend. Like share, share price doesn't mean a thing. When Tesla split five for one, the company didn't become cheaper um, just because the share price did. The company didn't become more valuable because the share, the share price split or the, the stock split. Um, so that's how I approach investing today, by doing almost the exact opposite of what the masses are doing. You said something I want to um, shine a light on. You took some amazing advice from somebody you never met before in Warren Buffett. Yep. Mentors. Did you have a mentor alongside of you? And I ask you this because there's somebody who is living in the middle of nowhere. And nine out of 10, they are not going to have an uber successful person that they can reach out to, get on the phone, ask questions, get advice from. But your mentors don't necessarily have to be in your immediate proximity to give you the wisdom and advice that you need. You're living proof. You just quoted, and I'm sure, I have to believe that you had mentors along the line who worked in the office, in that bullpen right next to you, hopefully, But Warren Buffett, one of the baddest guys to ever do it. Yep. He was somebody who mentored you from afar. So can you speak, before I move this on, just to the fact that mentorship doesn't necessarily have to be someone who is in the same room with you? Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's Sean. That's such a great point. I um, I've never, I've never been in the same room as Warren Buffett. Never, I've never attended one of his annual meetings, the Berkshire Hathaway meetings, which are like infamous now. Um, yeah. but just, just reading his story, reading about him, literally any publication I could get my hands on that that had his name on it, I was devouring it. And keep in mind, this was this was twenty years ago. So I was a new broker. Information was not as easily accessible as it is today. There were no iPhones back in 2000 when I was just getting started out as a new broker. Today, I mean, hell, you can be in one place and have a mentor completely around the around the world. Like you can follow him on Twitter. You know, like you can you can literally have direct access to through social media, through you know, booking consult calls. There's so much information that we have access to that that I didn't have. I mean, as a new broker, I was sharing a computer just to send out like confirmation letters with like 12 other brokers. Like, you know, you, you, it was like, it was like using a payphone in prison, basically. Like, you know, <laughs> your, your, time, your, your time is up, sis, get up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, you know, there, there were, there were far fewer um, ways that we got um, information back back then as, as, as opposed to today. I mean, I, I even remember when I wanted to get into investing in real estate heavily. I mean, I bought my first property in 2002, but I wanted to really, really kick off when the market plummeted back in 2008. And again, I'd learned by 2008, you do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So when the, when the real estate market crashed in 08, I watched it fall in 08, even like really crash in, in 2009. Um, I think the Philly market bottomed like right around 2010, 2011. And there were so few investors that were out investing in real estate at the time for a variety of reasons. Fear, thinking, well, you know, is this thing going to keep falling? Um, credit was tight. A lot of lenders weren't out there. So I remember thinking, now is my time to strike. Now that 
the masses aren't buying real estate like they were back in 2003, four, five, when you could do these no doc loans, literally everyone was investing in real estate. Um, and I remember at the time, Facebook was pretty big then. And I reached out to a guy I knew who was a, a big real estate investor. And, and he and I went to high school together and I DM'd him like, listen, like, you know, I'll pay, I'll pay for your time. I'll take you out to lunch. Like whatever we have to, like, I, I just want to pick your brain um, at, at my expense. I will, you know, I believe in, in, in honoring someone's time. Um, can I just like, you know, get some information from you? Do never respond it. Like left me on red, like, like <laughs> straight up, like, you know, and, and, and I said, you like for a lot of people, that's discouraging, you know, they, they reach out to people that they look up to on socials or they reach out to people and they either don't get a response or don't get the response that they're looking for. And they use that as an opportunity to say, you know what, this, this is just not for me. I had the exact opposite. I said, okay, like you gonna leave me on red like that. I now, I now own far more real estate than, than he does. Um, so for me, that was inspiring. You know, it's, it's, it's okay if someone doesn't give you the information that you want or the information that you're looking for or the mentor that, that's in your head or your best friend in your head isn't um, responding to your inquiries. Do it anyway. Figure it out anyway. There's so much information either through podcasts, business publications. I mean, the, the YouTube, I mean, the, the internet is, is just a plethora of, of great information. What's up guys. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share peace and love.